backed by a very strong management team who are truly aligned with shareholders through our 24% interest in the business, as well as 40% institutional backing. So uh, good, strong support from, uh, from a market perspective for a district scale exploration project in Ghana. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined once again by Luke Alexander, who is President and CEO of Nucor Gold. Luke, great to see you uh, once again on Assay TV. Uh, Nucor Gold are advancing the Enchi project in Ghana, and the company has just put out a, an updated mineral resource estimate. So, um, Luke, before we get into the numbers from that updated uh, MRE, um, can you just give us a, a quick little overview of the company? Yeah, Nucor Gold, we're advancing the Enchi project in Ghana. It's a district scale exploration project that's fundamentally uh, underpinned by a couple of resources. And we'll talk about the update that we recently put out. But also we've got a PEA on the project that fundamentally uh, underpins the value of the company. So district scale exploration backed by a very strong management team who are truly aligned with shareholders through our 24% interest in the business, as well as 40% institutional backing. So uh, good, strong support from, uh, from a market perspective for a district scale exploration project in Ghana. Fantastic. And can you give us some of the highlight numbers from this, this updated MRE? Yeah, so we, we put that out at the beginning of, uh, of March. It is an update from a 2021 uh, resource report that we had on the project. Uh, a couple of the key things that came out of the update that we've put out, uh, we've got our first indicated resource on the project. So 740,000 ounces of indicated resource that obviously significantly de-risks the, uh, the overall resource as well as we grew the overall size of the inferred resource. So we've now got 970,000 ounces of inferred resource. So 740 of indicated, 970 of uh, inferred. And then we also put out our first ever underground resource on the project. So about 130,000, 35,000 ounces of underground resource, as well as our uh, fifth resource area. One of the key things with the uh, update that we put out is it included about 34,000 uh, meters of drilling that directly impacted the growth in the, in the resource. We then got an additional 38,000 meters that didn't directly grow the overall resource but we made multiple new discoveries on the project, went back to previously drill tested areas, as well as made a number of high, high grade uh, uh, intercepts within the sulfides that don't have enough drill density to date to be able to move them into that resource category. But obviously they really highlight that district scale exploration potential that we've got on our, uh, on our project. So we've got five resource areas now, a total of nine targets that we've drilled on the project, but we've then identified about another uh, 15 targets across the property that we you know, continue to de-risk and look to over time uh, explore. So um, yeah, so we're very excited about the resource update that we put out. Excellent. So as well as increasing the size of the project, you've also increased your confidence in it and also identify these new regions. That's excellent. Um, in terms of this, um, that you had said, mentioned this higher grade underground resource um, that you've identified. Well, tell us a little bit about that and the significance possibly for the project going forward. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at these greenstone hosted deposits that sit along the Sefwi Bibiani belt, so there's two prolific gold belts in Ghana. The, you got the Ashanti belt, and then we're on the Sefwi Bibiani belt. Uh, a number of 5 million ounce plus deposits along trend from us. Uh, Asante's Chirano mine, which sits 50 kilometers uh, away, the Bibiani mine, and then one of Newmont's two uh, producing mines in country, the Ahafo mine. So where you see a lot of these deposits really increase in grade and grow in size is as you start to drill a little bit deeper and get into the sulfides. Um, if you look at the historical drilling that fed our 2021 resource update, the deepest hole uh, ever drilled on the project was down to about 125, 150 meters below surface. So a lot of the drilling has really been focused on the uh, heap leach material, the oxide transitional material near surface. So we've continued to grow that, um, uh, that, that, that footprint across our project. 
but for the first time we've now started to drill below 125 150 meters down to about 300 meters below surface and we've had some very encouraging uh, intercepts within the higher grade sulfides uh, so we were for the first time ever able to wrap a small resource around that as you mentioned 135,000 ounces of underground material which as you would know and a lot of your listeners would know is not a mine today but what it is for us is with a limited amount of drilling uh, within those sulfides we've been able to create a proof of concept that you know we've got similar uh, characteristics to our project that again you see at other more mature deposits and uh, and mines along the Sefwi Bibiani belt so we're extremely excited to be to have been able to put out uh, the first ever underground uh, resource on our project and now one of the things we'll obviously focus on is going back and doing additional drilling uh, at those underground resource areas but as well as a number of um, discoveries that we made across the project within the sulfides that warrant additional uh, follow-up drilling given the success we've had. Mm, makes sense. And you mentioned this fifth deposit. Uh, is that Tokasia? Um, you put Correct. out an inaugural inferred uh, mineral resource there. Tell us what you've identified and, and what that means. Yeah, so Tokasea is now our fifth resource area. Uh, one of the key things with Tokasea is that it does sit right next to uh, our Siyum deposit, which is our largest deposit, it sits about 500 meters to the mm. east. Um, so why that's important is obviously at once it comes time to mining uh, these areas is obviously having central, uh, you know, central heap leach pad um, and, uh, and, uh, and mine processing facilities all within a concentrated area is, uh, is important. Tokasea was a very large anomaly that we identified on our, on our property, about six by two kilometers in size. Uh, we did some first pass drilling, about um, 28 holes. We released those results in early 2022. We were very encouraged by what we saw and the, uh, and the results that we got, that we did an additional follow-up uh, drill campaign, 30 more holes really liked the follow-up drilling so finished it off with uh, 24 holes so we've put uh, 12, uh, 82 holes now into Tokasea uh, and we were uh, very happy to be able to put an initial uh, 46,000 ounce resource out on Tokasea again obviously given the size of the anomaly and all of the success that we had we will need to do a bunch of follow-up drilling but to be able to put out an additional an additional uh, resource area that we're now able to go back step out and continue to grow is something that we're extremely excited about mm -hmm. and how was the market reaction uh, to the mineral resource estimate lots of trading on the back of it yeah, we've traded about 5 million shares uh, since we released the, um, uh, the resource. Uh, the stock uh, initially traded down on the back of the resource, and I think we see that consistently. You know, companies put out, uh, whether it's economic studies or resources, and, uh, and that becomes a, a liquidity event for some shareholders to sell. Um, and I think also, you know, there were some investors who were looking for a larger uh, inferred resource. And um, you know what we focused in on was the fact that we were able to de-risk the project by putting out indicated ounces instead of just putting out a larger inferred number. And what that does is it meaningfully de-risks the uh, the resource and the project. So that, in terms of moving moving the um, uh, project forward, uh, is something that we see as a real milestone and important. Uh, in terms of our institutional investors and a number of corporates out there, those are the types of things that they like to see is, is confidence in the resource and the ability to you know, further advance the, the project by de-risking the ounces that uh, sit within it. So, um, so that's something we're, uh, we're extremely uh, um, happy about. Mm, absolutely. And you mentioned, I mean, you've got lots of um, new targets and additional targets to, to focus on. So where next for the drilling? So we are, um, you know, focusing on some of the deeper drilling. Again, we uh, had some very good success with the drilling that we did within the sulfides, those areas where we've been able to identify some initial underground resource. So we're going back to those areas, doing some follow-up drilling and continuing to look to expand uh, the overall size of those uh, uh, underground ounces.
Mm. And in terms of other, other work you're doing, uh, metallurgical test work and stuff, uh, you started work on that yet? Yeah, so we, we put out a couple of um, uh, press releases, one of them mid-2021 and a follow-up mid-2022, um, which uh, outlined uh, some of the column test work that we did on the project. Those had very good uh, results, about 93% average recoveries within the columns. Uh, so we are doing additional follow-up column test work on the project to continue to de-risk that, uh, that metallurgy, which is hugely important in terms of moving the uh, project forward. So we are in the process of doing another five column test, which we'll look to get those results out uh, in, uh, in Q3 once, uh, what, 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 once we've completed them. We're also uh, gonna be doing a couple of bulk samples. So these are much larger kind of pilot test um, uh, uh, met work uh, on, the, uh, on the project, one from Seum, one from Boeing, which is a further de-risking of, uh, of the met work. We're also looking at um, putting out in the first half of this year, a baseline and environmental study. This is one of the key things that feeds a, uh, a, a mining permit in country. So again, now that we've got this indicated um, resource with 740,000 ounces in the indicated category, doing some de-risking of other elements of the project is something we're focusing in on. And, uh, um, you know, at that stage, uh, we can move it towards a construction decision, which is another big milestone for the, uh, for the project. Mm. And as you start moving it towards that sort of um, construction and you look in, start looking at environmental studies and permitting and things like that, tell us a little bit about Ghana as a, as a mining jurisdiction. I mean, Ghana is a, a great jurisdiction to be operating in. And I mean, we're very fortunate we were able to amass such a large land package when we did. Uh, I mean, it's the sixth largest gold producer um, globally, just behind Canada and the U.S., um, it's got three of the top 10 largest gold producers on the planet. Uh, Newmont is in the process of investing another billion dollars into the country, which will take them to roughly 20% of their global production coming from, uh, from Ghana. Um, and then from a permitting perspective, um, you know, to get a mine permit in country, um, you know, our view is that uh, we could get that within uh, within a year. So it's one of the key differentiators is that being able to move projects forwards uh, forward don't take a decade. You know, it's the kind of thing that we can get done within a year. If we look at Asante, again, one of our neighbors to the north of us, they took a brownfield project. And within nine months, they had it fully permitted and back into, um, you know, back in uh, in production. If you take that same project and stick it in North America or Australia, you're probably looking at five or 10 years to do the same kind of thing. So for us, we see that as a real uh, differentiator for the company is the fact that we are going to be able to move this project forward in a much quicker timeline than you will see in a lot of other parts of the world. So a key differentiator for us. Superb. So to wrap things up, what should investors be looking out for in the next couple of uh, weeks, months, and the rest of the so we'll have our, our full uh, 43-101 um, uh, resource report, which will be out uh, in, um, uh, in April. So that, uh, you know, that's something to look out for. As I mentioned, uh, we are doing a bunch of additional uh, met work. So we'll look to get that out to the, to the market once it's completed. Uh, we are um, uh, uh, drilling, so we'll have additional drill results that we'll get out to the, uh, to the market. And then obviously that baseline and environmental study, that's another key uh, you know, de-risking event for the, uh, for the project. So the, that, that's a bunch of the news flow that uh, investors can expect over the next six months. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us today for that uh, update on the company. And we look forward to hearing more about it. As things yeah, unfold. great to see you, Leo. And uh, again, um, for anyone listening, we're very active on social media. So uh, encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn or, uh, or Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube channel. Um, we put out a lot of uh, good content, as well as uh, obviously we can be reached through the, uh, the website. So always keen to engage with uh, existing and prospective investors. Thank you very much, Luke. Thanks, Leo.